Welcome to Gold Derby. I'm senior editor Denton Davidson here with Grammy-nominated singer Cisco, formerly known as Lizard on The Mess Singer. Cisco, yes. I love seeing you on the show. I'm a 90s kid, so, I mean, Thong Song was an anthem at every party I went to. <laughs> it's one of many hits. What made you decide to mask it up and take part of the show and that so many fun, legendary mm -hmm. performers have taken part in? Um, me wanting uh, to be on the show kind of was prompted from my family because they're big fans of the show. And as it turns out, it said, it kind of seemed like in, at least once a season or once every other season, uh, one of the judges would guess that whoever was masked was was me. And I, um, you know, had never been on there. And so my family was like, they keep guessing it's you. When you just gonna go on there? And I'm like, <laughs> you make it seem like I just, you know, Go up to the you know studio, knock on the door. Hey, put me in, coach. You know what I mean. Um, but uh, basically, you know, I, I, we are somewhere different every week. I'm traveling, and then we uh, finally got the call um, uh, to be on the show. And I was like, you know, it was immediate for me because I was like, finally, then I can get my mom. I can get my mom to stop asking me to be on there. <laughs> I have to imagine you've known quite a few of the acts that have participated in the past. Did you speak to any ever about their experience or like, was this all blind and, and fresh for you? No, um, no, because uh, uh, I, I know Genuine and him and I, um, you know, he was he was unmasked, I believe, last yep. season. Yep. And um, and of course, he was under embargo. Uh while he was on there so you know i'm sitting there you know on on tour with this guy meanwhile you know he's on tele uh tv so uh and then when when i was on he was already off so i couldn't talk to him about it <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so i guess after tomorrow the next time i see him on the show i could be like hey he was <laughs> <laughs> What were your thoughts when you saw Lizard costume? Like, what could you relate to, and what were you most excited about for this costume? Uh, well, when I saw the costume, um, it's a reveal to to you um, when when they first give you the costume. So um, I was excited because it's almost like you you kind of thinking to yourself, um, you know, is this you know, this a depiction or a kind of spirit animal that people like, you know, come up for, you know, for you with. I don't I don't know how the process goes with the geniuses that make these elaborate costumes. But um I I the one thing I knew was that it wasn't gonna be a dragon because that was gonna be too much on the nose. Uh but and then Buster they went Run, Buster Runs already stole the dragon from you. He 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 absolutely did. The only difference between him and I, as I was actually born the year of the dragon, and and I actually owned this dragon. So <laughs> bam, take that, Buster. Anyway, <laughs> no, but um, it, Buster's cool. I was just saying, uh, I I was glad that when they told me what the costume was, that it it had like a kind of, you know, it had like a, a little bit of hip hop to it. You know, the hat was turned backwards, and um, apparently they got it. Uh, they got the idea um, from um, from my lady because her name's Elizabeth, Liz. Oh. and so I was I was actually happy that it was at least something in the kind of reptile family. Uh, well, you escaped two Smackdowns, but you you can't get past these two divas in Group C. Yeah. Clock and Poodle Moth would knock it out of your way. What was it like to be thrown in those Smackdowns? I know you didn't want to go home early. <laughs> no man not at all as a matter of fact um when we first got when i first got to the show uh i had heard the other um the other performers at at uh like sound check and when they were doing blocking and i was under the impression that this was like a straight up singing contest so i was like i ain't going to go smackdown ain't nobody going to sing me and lo and behold uh, next thing you know, yo, and this it, this was very funny too. Um, when you actually look at the way that I react when they say that I'm on a SmackDown, bruh, it was the funniest moment. Like the lizard, the, <laughs> I made it look like 
<laughs> you couldn't even see my face, but it was like me and Elizabeth did the same thing. I was like, oh, hell no. I was like, bro, I do not know this song. So because when I heard the, the intro of it, because, you know, um, it, if you're like a, a, a pop or R&B um, um, artist, we all doing our best Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson impression. Let's keep it 100, right? So when I when I heard Moving Out, that was the very first time I had ever heard Moving Out. And then the way it starts with the dun, dun, bum, 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 bum. and it was like, in my head, all I kept hearing was beat it, beat it, beat it. I was like, oh my God. Then the costume, first day, I, I could not see through that mesh. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't see the, the words was going fast out. The, my only saving grace was that um, was that the uh, the chef, the spaghetti chef, was going on before me. So while he's going, I'm pretending like I'm dancing, but I'm really like just like listening to how the melody of the song went. <laughs> and I was like, okay, cool. I, I think I got the melody, but the words, because the words come pretty pretty quickly. And I just, bruh, at some point, I just gave up on the words and I just started saying, just riffing. And I was like, you know, if if I get if I get kicked off, it's not gonna be because it won't be because I ain't sing my ass off. So I just uh the lizard unleashed the dragon that night. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you finally end up going home in the group C final. The Rita and and Robin know knew who you were. Why do you think those I, two in particular like knew? Well, for one, both Robin and Rita. Are, um, are musicians and so from a musician standpoint I think they recognized my tone as soon as almost as soon as I started singing and secondly I had been a, I had been at one of Robin's houses before a long time ago so you know I, I kind of knew that he was going to know who I was I, I think even Nick knew who I was because I was working with Nick um, a couple of weeks ago uh, as well and so when I came out there, he said, "Boy, you crazy." So I knew he knew who I was too. So they kind of knew from day from day one. So I knew my days uh, were numbered because, man, by the time I left, like the last day I was there, the crowd stopped saying "lizard" and started saying "Cisco." <laughs> well, Jenny, like, and it's a rap for me, bro. <laughs> Jen Jenny and Ken had no musical ear. They guess Ray J and Michael Bivy. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what's going on with those two. Yo, it was for oh my god, Kim is Kim John is so funny, bro. It was he he did some stuff. I don't know if it uh I don't know if it made the show and I'll see tomorrow, but he said something that was so funny about me. Um, but I don't want to give it away, so you gotta make sure you tune in tomorrow. I can't remember. I think he said it was was it Clock who was like mm. Janet Jackson. I mean, he's a mess. Uh, <laughs> right. I like Michael Bivens ain't even the one to sing in that group. He right. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't rap to save my life. <laughs> um, well, I mentioned Thong Song earlier. Such a massive hit. It's the 25 year anniversary of Unleash the Dragon. That's crazy. You got a Grammy nomination, uh, multiple Grammy nominations, Billboard Awards. Talk about that moment in your career for a minute. You know, you have to be really proud of that. Absolutely. I mean, you know, good old heterosexual male with a with a, a with a popular song called Thong Song. It's like I don't even gotta try. I mean, I'm I'm married now though. I'm married. I'm married now. But <laughs> but um but no, that was a that was a whirlwind um, portion of my career because uh man, I was like all the way in um, the mainstream, um doing movies, uh, hosting shows. I hosted uh, the Billboard Awards one year. Um, I had my own show on MTV. Uh, that was like right. Came on right after, uh, right after, um, right after TRL, and TRL back then was like the oh, like the was... biggest, like the biggest like show for pop music, and um, man, I was even beating, uh, I was even beating the ratings on that. So yeah, it was a it was a world, it was a whirlwind. I was like, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna lie. When I went through whatever I went through to step back from the, um to step back from the mainstream i was i was kind of happy actually i'm like i'm gonna finally get some sleep <laughs> that was the height of mtv in my in my opinion with yeah, yeah. and all those uh yeah, yeah. and it was when like 
R and B was pop, and pop was pop. I mean, it was a comp like you had you TLC, but there was the Backstreet Boys. I mean, it was yep. that's the music. Christina was Aguilera, Britney Spears, yeah, Instinct. right. And my black ace is right in the middle. Of all that. It was <laughs> yeah, we just don't see that mix of music anymore because yeah. Because everything's so separated in, in how we access music. So those were the glory days. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or it's or so, uh some stuff, you know, some stuff just kind of blends into each other. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um K pop is called K pop, but it kind of sounds like nineties R and B. You know what I mean? Yeah. Then you then uh, you know, with 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 artists with like incredible voices like uh Adele. Giving you that that good old blue eyed soul, like if it wasn't for, you know, if it wasn't for TV, you might have thought she was a sister. <laughs> uh, well, what's going on now? New album coming out. Um, I heard you might have some throwback collaborations with maybe someone like Maya. These are just rumors yes. I'm seeing. Um, what's going on now? Where can people see you perform? What's happening? Well, we're somewhere different. Um, myself and my group, Drew Hill, somewhere different um, around the world every week. Um, like I said, I'm literally sitting across the street from Wembley OVO Arena because we sold that out um, the night before. And uh, so, you know, you can um, see me there. I got some new solo music coming. It's second in a three-part series. Um, the first album, you can get anywhere digital music is sold. It's called Genesis. And this album I'm working on is called Exodus. And um, yes, uh, I do have Maya on it. I wrote Maya's first two singles, um, All About Me and Moving On. And this is kind of like a continuation of that. So, you know, uh, and then I'm going to just have, you know, some more, uh, some more to dragon for you. So please keep an eye on that fire because even cavemen want fire. <laughs> and are you still drawing? We learned on when you sang Scooby-Doo that you were... A, a like a really good draw. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I, is that something yeah. you do as a hobby? Like what's going on? Yeah, I uh like my like you see my my um my symbol. I I did all of this. Huh? Huh? But this is so, all you so do you do kind of your own graphic design. Yeah, um, well cuz I was a um I was a uh I came out of high school to the music industry. So I was in there for commercial art. So I kind of had a had an eye for it once we got into the music industry. Okay. So yeah, now just you know put it you know put it in in my work. Last question: Everyone wants to be a, like breakout star. How did you get in the music? Like where? Who opened that door for you? Um, the door was open um for the music industry through my group Drew Hill. Like yeah. I was saying, we, we uh, like a lot of people. Um, some people think I'm a rapper. Some people think that, you know, Thong Song was, uh, well, it, it ended up being um, a really big song in my career, but my number one single was the, was the ballad, Incomplete. But I got into the uh, industry um, straight out of high school with um, with my group, Drew Hill. So by the time I had done solo stuff, I was, I had already had platinum albums. All right. Well, if people come to your shows, can we expect to see some cool covers like that Evan F Essence cut that you dig. I'm oh my lord, bro! I don't think I, I think I, I I don't know what the legal ramifications of that, but bro, I would love to. Hey, hey, if maybe you could put a good word in for me with the network, and I can <laughs> you know do, uh you know do a cover of that record because um man, I was just getting into it. Then it was time for me to go. So, that was cool. But, mm -hmm. All right, Thanks, so. Great to talk to you. So much fun to see you on season 11 of The Masked Singer. And thanks for sitting down and talking about it with Gold Derby today. My pleasure, man.